Our heart here at Faith Ministries is bring the good news gospel message. And I don't know what that means to you, but knowing the fact that somebody tells you you're going to hell if you don't receive Jesus, even though that might be the truth, the good news is Jesus came and made, it, made us righteous if we'll trust him and receive him so we can go be with the Father forever. Now, we have uh, things that's going on around the world. I'm sure you're part of it. I'm sure you're seeing it on TV. But we are going to pray today. I don't know what you're going through with your job. I don't know what you're going through with your health, with your kids, the things that are happening. We're going to pray for you today, take time to do that. Uh, so why don't we do that now? Uh, stand with us. Just connect with your computer, with your phone, however you want to do that. Look, we're making connection, but we're wanting to believe God. First, I want to pray for our president. Father, I thank you for our president. I thank you that you are bringing him for, for, for wisdom from above. God, he's hearing from you. Bring the leaders around him with that wisdom. Remove the people that aren't supposed to be in there, Father. I just thank you for directing, guiding, leading him in these days that the decision is going to affect not only our city, our states, and this nation, but it's going to affect the world. Thank you, Holy Ghost, for being in that White House in the name of Jesus. Now I speak to the people that are physically going through stuff. First of all, God has not given us a spirit of fear, but power his love and his sound mind. So we speak to sicknesses, we speak to illnesses, infirmities, and we say, cease and desist. We speak life and health into your body in the mighty name of Jesus. And those that are dealing with financial issues today, you, you, you might be sitting down from your job. God is going to take care of you, and we're believing that because of what happened, what the enemy meant for evil, God's going to turn out for good because we trust him, that you're going to come out better than you would have if you hadn't have gone through this crisis. We're thanking you for increase, God, multiplication. I thank you for this church body and the church bodies in this area increasing that trust you in Jesus' name. Now, I just want to thank you for tuning in to this live broadcast. I pray that you'll share it with people and connect it with friends you know, people that you're connected with that need to see and hear about what God is doing in this hour and in this time. Also, during the week, Denise and I do what we call Capra Convos, just to we come together and speak for about seven, eight minutes uh, on a relevant topic to encourage you. Uh, we have just started recently on Wednesdays at noon. We're going to be live. I'm going to be live at noon. And we call this Good News in 15. People need good news. So in 15 minutes, we're going to share good news to you. And that's on Wednesdays at, Wednesdays at noon Central Standard Time. Also, we want to encourage you... Uh, I don't know where your finances are at, but now's the time not to stop giving, but to give. And we support missions. We support Bible schools in different countries of the world, uh, in Kenya, Tanzania, we, we're encouraged to. We're in uh, different places we support in Brazil. We, we just want to say we support people to touch the nations. We support missions because we, we believe in reaching the world with the gospel. So we want your giving to be part of us. And somebody told me this once, sow where you go. <laughs> you need to start sowing where you want to go. Help somebody. Get, get there with your giving. And this time, uh, I'd like to say that, you know, it's been really bad, but actually it's been good. People have been very generous in this time. And I want to say thank you for your generosity, for helping this ministry touch more people. And so with that said, uh, we're going to pray over your giving. Uh, you can give to faithministrieskc.com slash give, or if you do Venmo, a lot of the younger people seem to do that, and it's KC Faith Ministries. You do? And, and we're young then, aren't we? <laughs> so let's pray over your giving. Father, I thank you for the people that are sowing this week. I pray increase, increase in their giving, God, increase in their multiplication, increase in their households. As they trust you in this time, God, we thank you, God, that you always meet our needs according to your riches and glory in Christ Jesus. Amen. Well, I'm going to thank you uh, for being a part. Uh, we're going to move ahead to our message part of this gospel, and I'm going to invite my wonderful wife up here. <laughs> what a blessing she is. Tell us your name. 
They know my name. <laughs> Some Hi, might everybody. be new. I'm Denise, and uh, it's good to be here today. Wish you all could be here in person, but uh, I know we're connected in the spirit. And I love this because we've been using the uh, internet and doing Zoom even with our home groups. That's great. And it's caused us to even reach further. The home groups expanded. People, different places in the country can get on that way. And we can share together the word, connect that way. And it's really been good. We want to start and this out. So we out. do that Wednesdays. If you want on, let me know. Wednesdays at uh, 930. And I want to say to the people, leave a prayer request. We're going to go through these. We'll pray for you. We'll c connect with you. We want to stand with you in this time. Come on. This particular message put on our heart uh, is called, So You Want to Go Back to Egypt. And we're dealing with the group of people that got delivered from it, and yet because of their mindset that wasn't changed, they wanted to go back. So we, Denise, were walking through what the world would call a pandemic, a crisis, whatever you want to call it. Uh, I think we're going to see later that this was blown out of proportion. This was somebody using this to try to, uh, knock things down, knock you out, but in the but midst... We're, but we're all being cooperative. We, that, and we have been and cooperative. We're getting a good attitude about it and just cooperating. But, but I, I'm, I'm saying that to say that these things have happened. We have had to change to new ways of doing things. And for the church, that's a good thing. We need to change the way we were doing it. The way church was going on, we needed a reformation. We needed something to happen to yeah. shake us loose. Right. And we'll be talking about a whole lot of shaking going on. But in the middle of that shaking, in the middle of this reformation, in the middle of things changing, we can't go back to our old ways of doing things. It's a day and an hour where we've got to walk by faith daily. So I like this whole story about Egypt. It's incredible. And the timing is, I've just been impacted by it every day for the last few weeks because of the times we're living in, how this is so strategic that this, this Passover, this, this year, and this whole thing has fallen at the same time frame, how God is speaking to us through it. And, you know, really, the story of the Exodus, and we've talked about this in some other services, um, it's such a type of the Christian life. Because when we came out of Egypt, or we came out of the world... And we're baptized into Christ, and we're walking with Jesus, and then we've got choices to make, right? Whether we're going to be in faith or fear and unbelief, and that's going to show us whether or not we enter the promised land. So that's really the story of the Christian journey that we're all on. But I think it's interesting, as a church, uh, the, the word for church is ecclesia, and it means called out Come on. ones. And so this is a time more than ever, instead of us giving into uh, the Antichrist oppression and fear, we need to be the people of faith that are like, man, we are called out. We are born for such a time as this, and God is doing great things in the earth through us. And this is now a time of fulfillment of harvest like never before. You know, Denise, I want to look at that picture a little bit. You look at Egypt itself and the types and shadows in that, and Egypt is a belief system. It's an oppressive antichrist system that was trying to stop what God was doing and delivering his people. Do you know God is right now through all kinds of things trying to deliver his people so we'll fulfill the end time vision of reaching the nations with the gospel. And that's what we're called to do is to touch and affect the nations. But Egypt would represent a hard heart. It would represent this antichrist system and how people were under bondage. But along came Moses. And Moses can, is, it represents Christ here. And he's coming to deliver his people. And he's saying to this system, let my people go. Remember Pharaoh, Pharaoh, oh baby, let my people go. Remember, remember that song used to... He, he wants a chance to <laughs> sing this song so everybody at home sing along. Come on. But Moses is the deliverer, God's man. He, he could represent people like our president right now who's coming in and saying, let my people go to the system that's set up in this nation that's connected with other 
Antichrist systems that's trying to keep us in bondage. And he's saying, let my people go. You could be that deliverer in this time that are saying, let God's people go. And it takes faith and it takes believing God because you see a lot of opposition when you're called to do that. You know, the greatest Passover truly was Jesus coming and becoming the Lamb of God and the blood sacrifice he made for us so that our sins are forgiven and all that he fulfilled. Uh, and, of course, our sickness is included in that because remember, the, and I'll read this out of Exodus 12 in a minute, where they um, ate the roasted lamb and they ate every part of it and they were supposed to then make haste, have their sandals ready, and they were ready to go. And so we're challenging you today in this message, are you ready to go? We have a place to go where God's trying to get us all, and, and we have the, it's our choice. We can get swallowed up in the fear, or we can say, God, I trust in you. You're my source for everything, and you're leading us forward, and we want to walk with you through this. You know, I had to look at this mentality, Denise, of these people. Uh, God's people were delivered, but because of over a 400-year slave mentality, wow. they couldn't shake it loose. They were in that place where they were still bound, even though they were free. And I'm looking at the people that are here now, and we've come under a system that's told us you can't do this, you have to wear a mask. I was watching something this morning, I think it was somewhere in Texas, where they said, unless you wear a mask, you're going to get a $1,000 fine. And, and I'm thinking, what is going on here? What are these people doing? And so in a short amount of time, we've been connected or been adjusted to a world system, and we have to, and I'm not saying some of the things they're doing are wrong, but I am saying we cannot ever get in fear. We cannot ever get into that place where fear is motivating me to things that I'm doing. We are the ones with the power of God that should be laying hands on the sick and seeing them recovering in this time, not giving in to a fear-based system. So these people weren't able to go forward, weren't able to experience God's goodness because attached to that old system that they wanted to well, go back. Well, and to. then, of course, the challenge we all have is... Uh, Everybody wants to slip into the government's going to take care of me mode, which is a codependent mindset. And actually, that's, to me, my observation is that's what they're trying to stir up. Really, so that the anti-God people would rather you forget about God, trust in the government. God's got to get out of the picture because we don't want you trusting him. And all the more, we need to trust in the Lord. Say it, Denise. So, uh, do you want to ask these questions before I move on to... Well, I, I just want to know during this lockdown, are you getting closer to God? Are you getting more faith? Because I I've been a little bit surprised when this hit, how many of the believers I know gave in to the whole fear thing. Man, they were freaking out. And I, I just want to say that this is a time when we should have faith more than ever. You know, if you're walking by faith daily before this happened, you should be walking by faith in the middle of this crisis. And, but and, if you haven't been, it's tough to start learning how to walk by faith in the middle of it. And it's important, too, when we say that. Uh, some people, you hear different things. Words trigger the ways you related to God in the past. And when we talk about walking by faith, we're not talking about your performance. And I, uh, it is a response. Faith is a response. But it's so important to say our faith is in what Jesus has accomplished for us. That's good. And then we can believe and trust him because all the promises are ours when we believe that we've been made righteous by faith. And that's important. Otherwise, you get into, oh, I haven't done enough, and I've got to earn this from God. And that's missing the point, and that's that'll right. keep you stuck. And so Faith we, should be a rest in the finished work of Jesus. Yeah. And so uh, we, we want to, our beliefs to be rooted and settled in what Jesus has done for us. So I, I just, I really believe this prophetically, and I read this from a, a, a prophet that I follow in his teaching. And he said that he saw... Um, a heavenly encounter that he saw millions of people that were stuck in the dark night of the soul and the wilderness. And he said the strangest part of the encounter was that most of these people thought they needed to be there. And they felt comforted by the Lord and they were content just staying where they were. 
And it reminds me of how God fed manna and quail to the Israelites in the desert. God provided for his people, and even though they were supposed to, they were not supposed to stay in the wilderness, they were meant to go in the promised land, but they weren't ready to step out. And then I've got a verse I want to share, Deuteronomy 11:11, 11, 11, that says, But the land you're crossing, the Jordan, to take possession of is a land of mountains Come and on. valleys that drinks rain from heaven. We don't want to stop halfway. <laughs> Don't get in a stuck state by being in a comfort zone. God's wanting a new freedom for you, uh, dreams and desires fulfilled, visions he's given you to come to pass. So he wants to break you out of the past seasons. And that's really the theme of the first Passover when the Lord set the Israelites free. And so today, God is setting us free in the spirit. And as, as Paul said in Corinthians Uh, where the spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom. In 2 Corinthians 3.17, there should be freedom marking our lives as we move ahead with him and fulfilling purpose. So I want to get freedom going. I'm not stopping halfway. I don't want to miss what God is doing in this hour. And I believe, you know, I've, I've been around for a little while now and I've seen a lot of things happen. I would believe this would be in the last days or moving towards that way right now. And I don't see things on the... Antichrist side, the left, if you want to call it that, getting any better. I don't see them just bending over and say, okay, whatever you say. So, But we're going to have to say, God, even though I don't know exactly what's happening tomorrow or next week, yeah. I'm ready to trust you by faith. And I'm going to keep walking. And that's a lifestyle we have to and, learn and to live. And this is a place where you have to be flexible and adaptable. So many of us have just so... I'm not trying to be mean. You just get so stuck and you have all your ducks in a row. And if a duck gets moved and it just (laughs) upsets your apple cart. But we all have to learn how to adapt and change and be creative and and not let it overwhelm us. Because, you know, God never wanted us to be control freaks. He wants us to be able to trust him even in the middle of difficult things. You know, you, you mentioned to me about a story, Denise. Uh, where we live, we've got a pond right out behind us, and there's been some ducks there, and they've had baby ducks, these little mallards, and it was early morning, and I watched these little bitty ducks swimming, and then they got over to this place, because there's a retention pond, they call it, then there's this ramp, this concrete ramp, and the water goes underneath the street, and then it goes into another one, and I watched these little ducklings go off to the edge, and they're about ready to go over the cliff, it looked like to me. And pretty soon, and one jumps, the other jumped, the mother started coming, and she couldn't stop them, and they went down. I thought, oh, that's, that's it. But then later, we found that they went underneath, and then they got into the other pond. So are you ready to take steps of faith, <laughs> to you... go with the flow, so you can be where God wants you to be? Did you know, when you saw your little ducks, that that was a prophetic I... picture of what we need to do? <laughs> They and would, I, I thought they just dropped off a cliff, but later I found out that wasn't so. They were going to their calling. So anyway, we've got to be go with that flow of the Holy Spirit. And remember, uh, where we're headed, we're no longer in Egypt. We've got to let go of the things of the past. I love that verse, that one that we used in, in uh, Deuteronomy. The land you're entering to take over is not like Egypt, from which you have come where you're planted seed and irrigated it by foot as in a vegetable garden. You may not be where you're called to be, but you certainly are no longer where you were. And I love the song. Do you remember the song, He Did Not Lead Us Out This Far? He did not lead us out this far to take us back again. He brought us out to take us into the promised land. Back in the 80s, we'd listen to... Oh, there be giants in the land. I'll stop. Go ahead. We would listen to uh, these 80s worship teams singing that song, and they had a (laughs) trumpet section, and it would... It was beautiful music, and it's a reminder to not go back and keep trusting God as we're moving forward. We were brought out to get into our promised land. So remember, it's not God's plan for you to keep toiling. The Israelites were called to move from a season when they had to toil to a land flowing with milk and honey. And I know some of you are going, what? What? I don't like milk. How does this even, how does this compute where you feel like we're in such a crisis? But I'm saying God has a plan. 
and he's big in, bringing you into a bigger place. And I don't have it all figured out, but I do trust the Lord, and I've seen it coming for a long time. So I want to pray for you right now. I mean, we've got more to teach here, but I want to say, those of you that have been in a wilderness season, you feel stuck. The Lord wants you to come out. Come on, and so I pray from this time from Passover to Pentecost is the time, God, you're doing amazing miracles for everyone. And Lord, I thank you that we speak a release to miracle signs and wonders and provision and supply and all your goodness to be manifested and you're dealing with the doubt and the fear and we're resisting it. And you're giving us new strength and a stamina to get up and leave that limiting season. That's right. You know what will happen if you don't cross the Red Sea? You will be just like those with the chariots. And the, swallowed the, up. Yeah, the Egyptians got swallowed up. Don't get swallowed up. Instead, move ahead with God. Am I going to be a conformer or a reformer? And we've got to make some decisions here. You know, there's a global reset going on right now. And so am I going to adjust to it by the spirit or am I going to stay connected to the world system? You, you know, just to help you understand this, you, you look at Passover. And Passover started on April the 8th. And Pentecost is May 31st. So that's roughly a 50-day span. Wow. You know, 50 represents Jubilee. And God's trying to get us from Passover, where God delivered us, into Pentecost, where the Holy Spirit came in. <laughs> and now we, just like Jesus, are a man full of the Holy yes. Spirit, walking this out by faith daily, trusting God, and having more than enough to do what God called us to do. And this isn't pie in the sky. This is God showing himself strong to us. And there's no going back. Wow. You, you know, when I say an economic reset, if you haven't figured this out, there's some things going on. And my job is not to bring fear. I'm bringing in these truths because they're happening, but knowing that God's got so much more. Our oil the other day went down below zero. I don't know if you got this, but it didn't just go to zero. It went below zero. And so our oil market is pretty much just gone, done. And so that, that affects the world. There's so many things like that now. Uh, we just went in, went over, I think it was $24 trillion debt, uh, might maybe to $25 trillion. So I'm not saying that to lead anybody to get afraid, but what I am saying right now is God's doing a reset. We're moving from, I'm, watch, we're going to be moving to a gold-backed currency. Just, just watch and see. God is bringing us out of what could be, somebody would think, oh, depression. No, we say. We say an economic reset is going to happen, and we're going to be blessed by it because we're trusting God. In 2 Corinthians 4.14, this is a promise. We've got to trust the Lord. Christ always leads us into triumphal procession, and through us spreads the fragrance of the knowledge of him everywhere. I want to read that passage out of the... Um, Exodus 12, okay? okay? And so, th as I said, there's no going back. Now, I want you to get this about Passover, because remember, Passover Eve, this a true headline in our papers uh, said, all of Israel to fall under a curfew for the first time since the ten plagues. Do you realize this Passover year was the first one since the, since the first one? All these years in between, 4,500 years later, where Israel was under a curfew and they had to stay in their homes. And remember, that first one in Exodus 12 says this. I'll start in verse 3. Speak you unto the congregation of Israel, saying, In the tenth day of this month they'll take to them every man a lamb, according to their father's house, a lamb for the household. Come on. And I'm saying Jesus is the lamb for my household. For every household. For every household. And if the household be too little for a lamb, then, he shall, then shall he and his neighbor next unto his house take one according to the number of souls, according to every man's eating, and ye shall make your count for the lamb. Your lamb shall be without blemish. A male, a year old, you'll take, take it from the sheep or the goats and keep it until the 14th day of the month. And the whole assembly shall kill it at even. And they'll take the blood and put it on the doorpost and the lintel, wherein they'll eat it, and they shall eat the flesh in the night and roast it with fire. That depicts the judgment that Jesus took wow. for all of us. He was judged. 
So don't be saying God's doing this to judge us because he's not. Jesus took it. And in unleavened bread, with bitter herbs they shall eat it. Eat not of it raw, nor boiled with water, but roast with fire, its heads with legs. This is showing our healing. And let nothing of it remain until the morning. But that which remain of it until the morning you'll burn with fire. That's just showing us Jesus will heal every part that we need. Well, he healed. took our judgment so we could be healed. He and you, took our, he, I mean, his body was burned, beaten. He took that judgment so we can walk in health right now. And thus you shall eat it with your loins girded and your shoes on your feet and your staff in your hand and you'll eat it in haste. It's the Lord's Passover. For well, I'll go through the land that night. Look, at, it's when it's saying your sh- shoes on your feet, you've got to be ready to go. Are your feet shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace? And you're ready to go out and God's saying, hey, they plundered. It's Psalm 105, 37. They had all the gold and the silver, so their provision was for them at this miracle deliverance. And it's the same for us right now. We're leaving something behind, but we've got promise and provision and supply from God, and we have healing, not one sick among them. And we just put God in remembrance of his word and thank him for it. You know, I'm thinking of, you know, God has blessed us by the wicked to the just. You're receiving their wages. And what happened here, the people of Egypt were just giving all of their gold, their silver. They were saying, take it and just get out of here. I'm saying 400 years back wages, God was not going to let happen. So he brought it to where their hardened hearts just gave it up. And I'm saying he's doing a reboot for us, and you're going to get back wages. You're going to get double for your trouble. It's amazing. So this, this alone, this headline tells us that Passover's this one is none like none other. And today, or April 8th actually, we entered this celebration of the most observed Passover in history, the third most important Passover. The original one was the foundational one, and we, they were set free from the 430 years of bondage, which is totally a parallel, a foreshadowing of us today. God's taken us into something. Jesus on the cross as the Passover lamb of fulfillment is, of course, the greatest Passover ever. Wow. This allowed billions, past, present, and future in every nation on earth to escape their bondage to sin by passing through the Red Sea, the blood of Jesus. A future promised land of eternity. And that was a type of a baptism. Yes. We're baptized into the body of Christ as believers. Um. A future promised land of eternity with God was opened up to us as well uh, as the promised land destinies on earth. However, I believe this present 2020 Passover is the next greatest in historical resonance. On this Passover, the Lamb's agenda for nations becomes heaven's highest priority. And remember in Psalm 2.8, didn't Jesus ask the Father, or it's a Psalm of David, but where he's saying, ask of me, I'll give you the nations for your inheritance. And that means for you and I, not just church clubs or social clubs for believers, but the church of Jesus Christ becoming the influencers to the media. God knows we need help with media, right? And we need to be the influencers and in making the difference in government. In education. Education. We <laughs> Finances. Need, our children media. need to understand what's going on right now. And we need children to be taught in the ways of God and the goodness of God and so, the love of God. So are you called to reach the nations? I'm thinking of that song. Hear the sound, sound of the nations calling You know, the nations are calling right now. Are we responding in this hour, Denise? Awesome. So um, There's no more going back after today, is there? Right. We have been brought out. God is setting us up. We've all got his faith. I've got the faith of the Son of God. And so now I'm not going back. And so these are things. I'm not going back after today. No going back to survival mode. No going back to brick building while we wait for the rapture? Come on, we're waiting for the rapture. We're, no, we're not. Uh, no going back to passivity. No going back to limited expectations. My expectations are in you, 
Christ Jesus. No going back to a reduced future in the land of the living. Come on. It's a, we're not going back to reduced. Mm-hmm. Increase. Somebody say increase with me. Exodus 12, 11 instructs, you shall mm-hmm. eat yeah. with your belt on your waist and your sandals mm-hmm. on your feet. Yes. Yeah. So we're got, ready to go. Right. And, and that's what's neat about our church family here and you as a part of it. Uh, mission trips will increase because we've got a clear job to do, but, but missions to the nations and using our influence. So everything's different in a bad way if you don't move ahead with <laughs> the armies of heaven. If you don't move, it's, it's going to be a bad way change. This is really a rescue operation brought on by that our precious good. lamb, but he has a kingdom agenda to now execute and it is his Passover as well, and we must follow where he's going. So, yes, we have dreams and visions, but it needs to line up with how the Lord is directing and leading all of us. You know, uh, you've heard people say, well, I want to I look real quick at, is this Exodus 14? Yeah, Exodus 14, and you wanted to comment on this. No, that's actually Exodus 12, but I can no, go it's to 14. No, for, I think it's 14. Yeah, go, let me see. Yeah. It okay. is. Uh, and when, it's 1410. And when Pharaoh drew near, the children of Israel lifted their eyes, and the Egyptians marched after them. So they were very afraid, and the children of Israel cried out to the Lord, and they said to Moses, Because there were no graves in Egypt, have you taken us away to die in the wilderness? Why have you so dealt with us to bring us out? Of Egypt. Is this not the word that we told you in Egypt saying, Let us alone that we can serve the Egyptians? For it would have been better to serve the Egyptians and we'd die in the wilderness. And Moses said to the people, Do not be afraid. Stand still and see the salvation of the Lord, which he will accomplish for you today. For the Egyptians that you see today, you will see no more again forever. The Lord will fight for you and you shall hold your peace. Now, I want to look at this as a type and shadow. We've been through some stuff. We've been some, through some stuff with the president. I mean, they're trying to get rid of the guy everywhere. We turn the corner. Now this happens. Now they're trying to make it like it's his fault. And we know that somebody has set this up to cause problems, to cause our economy to go down. But what we're saying here is you would think after all they've been through and then they gave you their stuff, but they get like this resurgent. No, they, they wake up for a minute. Did we just give them all our money? Did we just send away all our slaves? We surely can't be doing this work. I'm telling you, in our demonic system, Antichrist system, I'm just going to say the left, in that all happening, they're coming for another run to get us. But you can't be afraid. You can't say, well, I should have stayed in Egypt. No, now's the time to watch God do his miraculous power and open up the Red Sea in front of you. And don't be one that gets an unbelief because the promised land was an 11-day walk that they turned into 40 years. You know, um, <clears throat> I wrote a book, and a lot of you know that. You've already purchased my book. Thank you for that. And so I'm going to do a book plug because this part we're going to share here about a whole lot of shaking going on. People are preaching this and uh, talking about this now more than ever before. And I wrote about this whole thing in my book in, I think it's chapter 10, a chapter called Mountains. But my book's for the rest of your life, living out your destiny blueprint. But what the Lord showed me through that, because a lot of people look at that passage and they see it in a negative way, like God is causing bad things to happen. And that's really not what this is about. That's a good point. So I want to look at this, um, and it's out of Hebrews 12, 25 through 29. I want you to look at it and meditate on it, and then you can, it's, it's actually a, a prophecy, it's prophesied back in the book of Haggai as well, so I'm going to look at it real quick where it says, see that you do not refuse him who speaks, for if they did not escape who refused him who spoke on earth, much more shall we not escape if we turn away from him who speaks from heaven, whose voice then shook Come the on. earth. Now, that when it's saying his voice shook the earth, this is referring back to the giving of the law in um, Mount Sinai. But now he has promised, saying, yet once more I'll shake not only the earth, but also heaven. Now, this yet once more indicates the removal 
of those things that are being shaken as of the things that are made, that the things that which cannot be shaken may remain. Since we are receiving a kingdom, remember the kingdom is righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Ghost. Since we're receiving a kingdom which cannot be shaken, let's have grace, empowerment, God's ability, by which we may serve God acceptably with reverence and godly fear, for our God is a consuming fire. And that is a, a powerful word. Come on, Denise. I don't know what you're yeah, looking for. Yeah, my here. other page. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so, um, and here's the commentary I looked up and reflected on. I just love this. See that you don't reject or disregard him that speaks. That means the gospel, the good news gospel. Don't refuse the good news gospel being spoken to refuse you. Refuse religion, but not the good news gospel. Don't refuse the covenant offered through Mount Zion. In, in the message version, it says it like this. You've come to Jesus who presents us with a new covenant, a fresh charter from God. He's the mediator of this covenant. That's Hebrews 12, 24. So this is all the context. Spend time meditating on this. It's going to revolutionize your thinking and transform your soul. Our kingdom of, cannot be shaken. He tells us let's have grace because then we can serve God acceptably with awe. In essence, you may have refused to hear him then. Back in, remember, when the giving of the law, it was so terrible and ominous and scary, they did not want to hear the voice of God. So you may have refused to hear him then, but don't refuse now. And so this is such a contrast to Sinai and Zion. Before Jesus came, it seemed so God was so distant and threatening. But now Jesus comes and we are welcomed right into his presence where angels celebrate. Come on. So this really has to do with the new covenant, the giving of grace and the mediator of the new covenant. So in, in Haggai, which is quoting, in Hebrews, which is quoting Haggai, it says, the Lord says, once more, I'll, I'll shake the heaven and earth, the sea and the dry land, and I'll shake the nations, and they shall come to the desire of all nations, and I'll fill the temple with glory. God's glory wants to be manifested now more than ever. Well, this and I would say the time. glory rose in the temple, but you're now his temple. And how many know you have God's glory in you if you're a born-again believer? And so let that glory out. Let it affect the nations wherever you go. I love this. In the commentary, when I looked this up and was studying this whole passage, it said this, uh, the meaning of the whole is this, that while the giving of the law at Sinai was fearful and solemn, it was an event that, that shook the vicinity of that holy mountain. But the introduction of the gospel of Jesus Christ agitated the whole universe. <laughs> and so there is some things happening now because we're getting nearer and nearer to uh, God's purpose and plan fulfilled, and the enemy is angry that he's got a short time. And so we've got to have grace by which we can serve God. And grace is God's ability that works from your heart to empower you to do what you can't do in your own ability. How many need that? Because in our ability, we can't do it. Have you realized it yet? But this time, this reset, God is giving us his grace. He's given it to us since the since the Holy Ghost showed up, come on, and now you've got it, and now we're going to operate in it. Let me just quickly look at this one verse here in 2 Corinthians, Denise, because at Sinai, 3,000 people died. You know, when the law was given, 3,000 people died, but when the Holy Spirit came, come on, in the book of Acts, at Pentecost, so we're going from Passover to Pentecost, 3,000 people were born again. Yes. And the scripture in 2 Corinthians 3, 6 for the letter kills, but the Spirit brings life. Life is when you trust in the Holy Spirit to guide you by faith daily. He has given you life. You, if you're born again, you got life. Get filled with the Holy Ghost, then you start operating in that faith and that grace He's given you to walk this out. And, and you know, we, we want to look at this uh, scripture in Acts 1.8 that I think we have up on the screen uh, because... The Lord promised you'll receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you. 
and you'll be witnesses to me in Jerusalem and Judea, Samaria, and the end of the earth. You know, this is such a key time, Passover to Pentecost, and like Dennis said, we've been saying it, May 31st, this May, is the Feast of Pentecost, and this is a time where we're reflecting on God, how he empowered the new believers to be filled with the Spirit, to be witnesses, and so it's, it's witnesses to have God's glory revealed through you. And one of the prophets I was listening to yesterday, and it was so good, he was just sharing how he saw in like a vision or a dream that millions were baptized into their inheritance and that the spirit of adoption is on America. Come on. And that this happening is not about the China virus. This is about... Jesus's plan to touch and impact the nations, to use all of us, not to just be good churchgoers, which that will be wonderful if we all value the connections we have in the body of Christ, but to be people that fulfill destiny and make a difference and stop allowing, because we have the freedom to do so, uh, stop allowing these takeovers in our education system or in our uh, uh, media and influence that entertainment using your skills and gifts to be creative and influence with the gospel of the kingdom. What's your part in these last days? And as Denise just read, this was the last command that Jesus gave them before he was out of here. And he said, but you shall receive power when the Holy Ghost has come upon you. You shall be my witnesses. Yes. Now, I don't know who's listening to this. I, we're, we're telling you this, but we want to know if you need to be saved, number one, and be filled with the power of the Holy Ghost. We're making that invitation to you now. Yes. I received Jesus when I was 16 years old, and then a little bit later, Denise and I went to this church, and they said, you want to be baptized in the Holy Ghost? I said, yes, I want all that God has. So I'm going to pray with you. If you're there today and you say, I don't know if I know Jesus, man. I went to a church once. No, we're talking about asking Jesus yes. into your heart as your Lord and your Savior. And then saying, Jesus, fill me, baptize me with your Holy Ghost and with your power that I can be a witness. So if that's you, I'm going to pray this prayer, and then you just repeat it with me. And you repeat it, Denise, as you're, you're doing it. Kind of help them along. Say, Jesus, Jesus, I believe you're the Son of God. I believe you're the Son of God. And you died for my sin. You died for my sin. And then rose again. And you rose again. Thank you, Jesus, Thank you, for Jesus. saving me. For saving me. For forgiving me. For forgiveness. Jesus, I ask you to come into my life. Come into my life. And be my Savior. Be my Savior and Lord. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Holy Spirit. For filling me up to overflowing. For filling me up to overflowing. Baptizing me with your power and your anointing. Baptizing me with your power and your anointing. Thank you, Jesus, for Thank filling you. me with your Holy Ghost. For filling me with the Holy Ghost. I receive all your provision, Lord. I receive all of the back wages from the oppression. I thank you. You're a God of restoration. I thank you, Father, for divine purpose and destiny coming to pass in my life. I choose it. I believe it. I speak it. I agree with you for it, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you Father, for your peace. Thank you for your healing power restoring me emotionally and physically in Jesus' name. Jesus' name. If you prayed that prayer for the first time, either one of those being baptized in the Holy Ghost or being saved, let us know. Respond on your screen and say, that was me. Let us know. You can go to our website, faithministrieskc.com. Let us know. Uh, this is going to finish up today, but we're going to keep going. Share this with friends you have so other people hear about this. But we're not going back to Egypt. We're going to the promised land. God bless you. We'll see you soon.